Hey guys, this is Anthony Morganti from AnthonyMorganti.com. This is episode 6 of the video series where I'm helping photographers get started using Photoshop. In this video and in the next several videos, we're going to be doing things that we often need to do in Photoshop. Now we're going to be repeating a lot of the things we already learned, but in each video I'll be introducing new concepts. Before I do this though, if you guys could do me a favor, all my videos are free and if you could help me make better videos, please take the time to look in the top right hand corner of this video and you'll see the letter I. Click on that letter I and you'll learn how you could help me make better videos. All right, what we're going to do today is I have this image here. It's a raw file and I just set my camera up on a tripod and took this snapshot more or less. Then. I put a 10 stop ND filter on my lens and I took this shot and you can see in this shot the water is more blurred. But unfortunately in this shot it was a bit windy out and you could see that the trees are very blurry over here and a little blurry over here. So what I like to do is take the trees and the stones and the you know a lot of the image the sky from this shot but I want to use the water that is nice and blurred from this shot. So to do that we need to go into Photoshop. Now if you look, I, I, they're both RAW files and they've both been processed fully in Lightroom. I do most of my work in Lightroom so they're both fully processed. You also might have noticed that this image is considerably warmer than that image. That's because whenever you use an ND filter it typically will put a color cast on your image. Some ND filters put more of a cooler color cast whereas others will do a warmer color cast. Uh, this specific one, I think it was a, a B&W filter, it put a little bit of a warmer color cast. In this instance I don't think it would matter um, because I'm just going to be taking the blurry water from this one and adding it to that one. So I don't think it's going to make much of a difference. In some cases it might make a difference and you will have to go up into the basic panel here and you will have to adjust the white balance to try to get them more closely matched to each other. So I'm not going to worry about it. I think this is fine. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take both of these images and send them over to Photoshop. And we've done this before and you probably remember to do that. We need to select them both. So I have one selected. I'm just going to hold the command key in and click on the second one. If you have a PC you'd hold the control key in. Then what we're going to do is just right click on either of them down here in the film strip, go up to edit in, then all the way down at the bottom the very last choice is open as layers in Photoshop. So we're going to click on that and it's going to take a little bit. Oh we come up with this error. Lately we've been getting this uh, since they've been updating the uh, Photoshop and or Lightroom where it says that the version may not be compatible. From what I've heard and read, this is more of a bug than it is anything really to be concerned about. So just click open anyway and don't really worry about it. I've not encountered a problem. So what Lightroom is doing now, it's preparing both of those files and it's going to bring them over into Photoshop and it will open them both as layers, one on top of the other. And it's just going to take a second because they are raw files, so it actually has to read the raw format as you saw and do some tricks to get them to load up into Photoshop here. And then once it is loaded in Photoshop, we're going to do some things we've already done. So like I said, we're going to be repeating some of the stuff, but there's going to be new stuff introduced as well. So the way they opened up is really the way I want them to be. I want the layer that has the good trees, the good sky on top. And on the bottom, I want the layer that has the good stream on the bottom, but the bad trees, we'll call those bad, that are blurry. So that's the way I want them um, to be. Now you've noticed, I'm sure, that they're not perfectly aligned, even though I used a tripod, the, I must have moved it. Probably when I was uh, taking off the lens uh, hood, then screwing on the, the ND filter, then reapplying the lens hood, I probably moved everything slightly. So I wasn't very careful. But that's okay. We could fix that in Photoshop. So what we're going to do, and we've done this before too, we're going to select both layers. I'm clicked on one that's selected. Again, I'm going to hold the command key in and click on the second one. Again, if you have a PC, you'd hold the control key in. So they're both selected. 
we're going to go up to edit and we're going to go down to auto align layers and we want an auto projection that will work fine nothing else is checked and we're going to click OK and it's just going to take a second and it's going to align them at the pixel level so now they're perfectly aligned in doing so you could see that we have some blank pixels over here so that happens sometimes and that's no big deal we'll crop it away so we're going to get the crop tool the C key on your keyboard is the keyboard shortcut for the crop tool and it's right here so we're going to clip, click on the crop tool and then up here we have different things uh, you know within uh, height resolution or the ratio I'm just going to keep it as the ratio again these are the tool attributes go across the top whenever you pick a tool across the top are different attributes you could do, change or modify for that tool now we're just gonna crop this to get rid of these uh, blank pixels so I'm gonna pull up from this bottom right hand corner and that will take care of any pixels that are bad on the bottom or on the right hand side and there were like just a few up here in the top I noticed so I'm just gonna pull down from the left hand corner a bit and then I like that crop so we're just gonna click this checkbox right there and that's going to accept the crop so now we have a perfectly cropped image and the layers one on top of the other exactly like I like them now we want to mask out this stream so we have the four second exposure stream coming through and again we've done this before we're on that top layer and we're gonna get a layer mask we click right here to add the layer mask and we're gonna paint on the layer mask now it's a white mask so you easy you know this confuses a lot of newcomers to Photoshop what do you paint in well if it's white and you need to change it paint in black so we're gonna get a brush hit the B key on your keyboard is the keyboard shortcut for the brush and we're gonna paint in black you should have a black swatch in front and a white swatch in the back if you don't if they're different colors hit the D key on your keyboard that gives you the default black and white if white is in front and black is in back to switch them hit the X key on your keyboard to switch them so we're gonna get now again we're gonna go up to the tool attributes up here to the top we're gonna click right here and I want a really soft brush so I'm gonna have hardness all the way off off and I'm gonna get a relatively big brush so I'm gonna get the right bracket key to make it larger and then all I'm gonna do is paint in black make sure you're clicked on the mask you don't be clicked on the image or it won't work and you'll be painting black right on your image you don't want that so we're gonna paint right on this stream and again all I want to do is bring over the water and I don't really need to bring anything else and you could probably see that it doesn't matter that the white balance or that this had a warmer color cast than the top layer it really doesn't matter it seems to fit in there pretty well okay so again this is nothing we haven't done before we've done all this so I like that so there is our blurry trees and what we did basically is now we have better trees and I like the sky better in that one too than that one so that's that all right now everything we've really done before now we're gonna do a couple different things one thing I've never really talked about before are filters there's all different types of filters in Photoshop there's filters to blur things to blur things all different ways there's probably a dozen different blur filters there's a dozen different sharpening filters you could sharpen things all different ways and we're gonna use a filter now that's called the camera raw filter and what you'll find is the camera raw filter is exactly like the develop module in Lightroom it's the same thing it uses the same process engine and what I want to do is I want to bring out the yellows the greenish yellows in the trees a little more and I want to add a vignette now I could do that in Lightroom but I'm going to show you how to do it here in Photoshop now when you ever when you add a filter almost all the time almost all the filters they get added to whatever layer is active and usually you don't want to do that sometimes you do but usually you want to add the filter to everything so to do that we could do one of two things we could flatten these layers and to do that we would go up to layer and then down to flatten image and what it will do it's just gonna combine these two layers into one layer now that's nice because it makes a smaller file so if you're hurting for drive space you may want to flatten your image that will be a 
a considerably smaller file, especially if you have a lot of layers, a lot of adjustment layers and things like that. If you flatten it, you'll have a lot smaller file. The other thing you could do is you could combine everything and put a combine layer on top. And that's what I'm going to show you to do now. And to do that, it's a really crazy keyboard shortcut. Some people call it like twister for fingers. And to do it, if you have a PC, you're going to hold down Shift, Alt, Control, E. That's E as in Edward. Shift, Alt, Control, E. If you have a Mac like I do, you're going to hold down Shift, Option, Command, E. And when you do that, you'll see you'll have a new layer on top. And all that is is a combination of everything below it. And you can see when I turn off the ones below it, nothing is happening because that pretty much is everything in that top layer now. So whenever whatever filter I choose to add to this will get be will be added to this top layer. So we're good to go. So we're going to go up to filter and we're going to go to camera raw filter right there. And what it does is you'll see the camera raw thing opens here and it looks different than the develop module Lightroom, but it has the same functionality. You can see here to the right, this is our basic panel. We have tone curve. We have sharpening, that's the detail tab. We have the HSL grayscale tab. We have split toning. We have lens corrections. We have effects where we could put in our vignette and other things. We have camera calibration. And then we have presets. And you can see I have one whole preset in my thing. So that's that. Now up here at the top, we have some of the tools like the brush tool, the red eye removal tool, the graduated filter tool. And it's a little difficult sometimes, even for me after using Photoshop all these years, to really remember what kind of where things are because I'm so used to Lightroom. So what I encourage you to do, if you're not sure, just hover over something and a little tooltip pops up. So that's the graduated filter right there. That's the adjustment brush. Red eye removal. Same thing over here. Like if I hover over this, that will detail will come out. So, so don't be afraid to like hover over things. So what I want to do, I mentioned I want to, these, this yellows that are up in here, the yellow greens, I want to kind of make those brighter. So I am going to go to the HSL grayscale and I'm going to go to the luminance tab. Now I want to use a targeted adjustment. Though those of you that use Lightroom know that Lightroom has the targeted adjustment tool right there. It isn't here. It's way over here. So it's right there. See the tooltip comes up targeted adjustment tool. And you can see it has a keyboard shortcut of T. So we're going to click on that. And with the targeted adjustment tool, I could now click on something that is like bright green and just drag up and it's going to make it nice and bright. And you can see it's moving the yellow and the green sliders. So I kind of like that. I just want that to be brighter. That's mainly what, it, uh, what I wanted to do with that. The other thing I want to do is I want to, let me just see. I want to go to the basic uh, tab and I want to go to clarity. And I want to just see if I push clarity up a little. If that makes, yeah, I kind of like that. So that looks good. And then we're going to go to the effects tab and I'm going to put a vignette on it. And you can see we could do vignette just like in, in uh, Lightroom. So we're going to add a vignette, not too heavy of a vignette, just a light vignette, like that. All right, so that is done. I think we're done with this filter, the camera raw filter. So I'm going to click OK. And what it will do, it will now apply that camera raw filter to that layer. Now, one thing you might have noticed is it doesn't really show here that anything was done to this layer. I mean, we could see it. I could see that the the yellow greens in the trees are brighter, but I could see there's a vignette. But what I mean is there's nothing here indicating that any filter was done to this, and there's no way to go back and maybe change something. Well, in the next episode, we're going to talk about smart objects. With a smart object, we could actually put filters on a smart object and go back and change the filter. And we'll do that in a subsequent episode as we introduce some new functions and new things you could do with Photoshop. Now, I'm done with this in Photoshop, and people have emailed me, even though I did do this in other episodes, about when you're done in Photoshop, how do you save it? Well, 
if because I almost always come from Lightroom is I usually just quit Photoshop and it will ask me to save it. You, if you're not in Lightroom, you could just go up to File, Save or Save As. If you want to save it as a different name, go to Save As. Now, because I come from Lightroom and it's a, it's just a habit for me because with a Mac, it's easy to quit apps by hitting Command Q. So I'll just hit Command Q and quit, or you could go down here to Quit Photoshop. And then it comes up with this. Do you want to save changes? And I'm going to go yes. So we're going to save those changes. You can see the status bar is down here in the left-hand corner. It's saving those changes. It's, it's preserving all those layers. So if I open this up later, for even from Lightroom into Photoshop, and I open the original file, those layers will be preserved. Now you can see we have three files down here. We have the original file that had the uh, faster shutter speed with the trees that were frozen. We have the other original file that had the blurry trees, but it had the, um, the stream that was all kind of blurred. And then we have this combined file where I actually just took the stream from the slower shutter speed image and then I uh, brought it into Camera Raw and I kind of brightened up the trees a little bit and added a vignette to it, a very light vignette. I prefer darker the dark vignette over a white vignette. Let's say the black vignette over the white vignette. I prefer the black vignette usually. And I don't like it to be very heavy. I like it to be uh, applied lightly. And so that's that. So that's this. I, I'm going to inch everyone along because a lot of people get lost. I know a lot of you want to go quicker. I get emails all the time saying I'm going too slow. But then I get like way more messages and emails from people telling me that I'm doing this at the perfect pace. So the next episode, we're going to get in a little deeper and we're going to do some things with smart objects and things like that um, to get you to really be a pro at using Photoshop. So thank you everyone that watches my videos. I truly, truly do appreciate it. I'll talk to you guys soon.